So Eric, I have a question for you. Is it time to refinance your home today? Dave, I think that's one of the biggest questions we face in mortgage lending. And it's all over the media that amazingly rates have just fallen through the floor. Now kind of quantify that for me. And what we're gonna do is walk through some of the don'ts, you know, some of the avoid this is in terms of, hey, don't get caught in that little mindset trap around refinances. However, there's a ton of value to doing refinances. We've performed refinances. We've done refinances ourselves on our own homes, but don't get caught up in the hype. Yeah, and I, and I think more importantly, Eric, we've said this before, but I think this is why it's so important to work with a mortgage professional to assess the entire situation because rate and payment are just one part of your whole financial picture as an individual and as a family. And so there's a lot of questions that go into it versus just what's my rate today. So for example, rates have come down in the past 30 days. Again, we're shooting this about the middle of August. So interest rates, mortgage interest rates have come down about 37 basis points in the past 30 days. So what does that mean? So again, 100 basis points equals 1%. 50 basis points is a half a percent. So let's call it about three eighths of a percent in interest rate that rates have come down in the past 30 days or so. So the trend's in the right direction. We love that as mortgage lenders, right? And I think the trend's going to continue that way. There's discussions about rate cuts in September, et cetera, which is all great news. But what does it really mean? Because on a typical $400,000 loan, a one eighth of a percent difference in mortgage payment is about 33 bucks a month. So equate that 37 basis points to three eighths of a percent. It's basically, if you were to refinance from 7% to you know six and five eighths, for example, today, you're saving yourself about a hundred bucks a month. But the question is, is a refinance free? Are you really saving a hundred bucks a month? So what we look at, and this is historically what we've looked at, uh, people like us in the business, we've been in it for a while. And there was this concept of break-even analysis and it's a rough and dirty, it's not taking into account taxes, it's not taking into account opportunity cost on money. But if it costs you to earn that hundred dollars a month, if it costs you $4,000 or $6,000, you can really easily see that's 40 months or 60 months. And it just totally depends on how much your closing costs are, what your interest rate cost is to achieve that lower interest rate if that's what you're looking for on a rate term refinance. Obviously a cash out refinance might be a different story, but it doesn't come for free. And it used to be a little easier to hide the closing costs into the interest rate because there was enough premium behind the scenes to do that. Today, that's not really the case. And so you're paying for that money in some form or fashion. Why don't you describe that a little bit, Dave? How does that get accomplished? Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but we want to make sure that, well, shoot, if you're going to be out of your house in two to three years, that's your game plan, taking four to five years to earn back the money that you spent for the refinance may not make sense. Right. Well, and there's ways to pay for the closing costs as well, right? So what you might hear is, you know, somebody calls you up, you know, they've got dialers out there that will call you up and say, hey, Eric, it's a great time to refinance today. I can save you, you know, $300 a month in your payment. But what they don't tell you is that they're going to finance in the closing costs into your loan amount. So let's say your loan balance going into the refinance is $300,000 and your closing costs are $5,000. So they're going to do a refinance they're going to reduce your payment by a couple hundred bucks a month, but they're also going to tack on $5,000 to your existing loan balance. So now you're actually paying for that $5,000 refinance cost over a new 30 year period. And so you have to think about those things. Again, aside from just payment, there's more things and thought that needs, needs to go into refinance than just that difference in payment. That's a hundred percent, you know, the story here is to understand the whole game plan. And of course we do refinances as a company and the industry does good refinances, but you don't want to look at just one thing. Like, so, so for instance, the interest rate, because what does that interest rate cost you in terms of w within what you might be financing into the new loan that you have? You might be taking, you know, rates really fell in 2020, we're in 2024, let's just call that four years. So you may have a 30 year fix that has 26 years left. If you roll that into a new 30 year fixed, 
part of the payment betterment is going to be because you tacked on four more years. So there's a concept of let's look at really what this transaction is doing for you. And there's a lot of benefit to doing refinances, but some of the benefits get overlooked by some of the hype around some of the advertising that does not tell you all the fine print. For sure. And there's another thing to think about is, is again, every time you do a refinance, you're recasting that, the loan amount over that period of time. So typically for us, it's 30 years, right? For most loans today. But if you've paid down your loan to say 20 years, so you know it's going to pay off in 20 years and you refinance today, now you're restarting a 360 month payment stream. So that's another thing to consider is that, geez, what if I were to do a 15 or 20 year loan instead of a 30 year loan? Typically on a shorter term, you can get a little better interest rate than you can on a 30 year term. So those are all things that you should be thinking about and why, again, you want to talk with a mortgage professional that can walk you through all those different scenarios. And I'm not saying that a refinance today might be a good thing. We've heard recently that, you know, consumer debt is at an all-time record. I mean, you know, as of last week, we were at, as a country, we're at $1.14 trillion in credit card debt outstanding. A lot of that 9% is actually in default. And so, and interest rates on credit cards are what, 20 to 25%. So there could be good reason for you today to do a refinance just for from a cash flow perspective. But another thing that I wanted to point out too is that if you do refinance, and again, I think the trend is coming down, and I'm not saying that refinances are a bad thing. I'm just saying consider all of the things that go into a refinance, all the costs and everything else. But I wanted to use the example of if I can reduce my payment by $400, and I really need that 400 bucks a month for I have to buy a new car, I've got kids going to college, et cetera. I totally get that. But if you can continue to stay on your current payment plan going forward after you refinance, even though your payment is $400 less, you can continue paying that $400. That will pay off your loan considerably in less months than you would on the 30-year term. So just something to think about there too, that you can't overpay your principal balance each month after refinance. You know, huge points there. And I think going back to what's my interest rate, I remember doing home financing for a lot of customers and that interest rate was super important to almost be like a badge on your, uh, you wore on your shirt or you wore on your sleeves. And that is, oh man, oh, you're at six and an eighth, I'm at five, nine, nine. Like this is a big thing, but there's a cost difference. Like, those rates could have been achieved in the same time period. It's just that one came with a little bit more upfront cost than the other one, or the rate that you're focused on on your house, like you just mentioned, maybe needing to be balanced against rates you have on consumer debt on a auto loan on home improvement you did a home equity line and now you're looking at maybe consolidating the entire financial picture in the house into one loan and that can do things for you over and above what your rate you're replacing on just the mortgage so there's a lot of strategic advantages to looking at new financing with a new eye towards what it's doing for you. Not that I have this really low interest rate on my first mortgage, so I'm gonna suffer in all these other areas financially, including more monthly payment, including higher interest rates on other debts. So talking to professional really helps you identify and isolate what are the benefits and what are the advantages of considering a refinance? Because there are a lot of benefits. There's a lot of advantages to doing it, but you want to do it with eyes open, not blindly. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I've been caught up in this before too. And I've, I've been doing this my whole career. And, you know, when I do a loan, it's like, well, I'm doing a 30 year fix for sure. And, you know, I asked myself, it's like, do I really plan on having this loan for 30 years? I mean, you know, our last house we were in for 20 years. And I think I had a refinance like four or five times during that 20 year period, you know, as rates fluctuated and stuff. So it's important, like you said, it's not necessarily the interest rate badge you can wear around to a cocktail party to say, hey, my rate's at, you know, four percent or what have you, but it's really how long do you intend to stay in that house for? You may have a plan that you know that this is temporary. You know, personally, like, you know, we're relatively recent empty nesters and we knew we weren't going to be in a big house for that long because we didn't want to have the maintenance and everything else of a large house. So did it make sense for me to, you know, refinance, incur those costs and then reforecast my loan over 30 years again? Probably not. If I plan on being there for a long time, I just have to factor in those costs for the refinance over a period of time. If I think that rates are going to come down in 2025 or after the election, I'm probably not going to have a loan if I were to refi today for five, six, seven, eight years to recoup the cost of doing the refinance today. No, huge points. And so 
That is, again, the reason we advise and we suggest that people will get with someone who actually understands these principles, understands how to communicate a variety of options and looks at the whole picture financially to understand what, what are the moving parts here? What are the motivations? How long are these time horizons? How long might you be in the home? Obviously, people don't know all the time, you know, five years out in their picture, but we can structure things depending upon what the circumstances look like today. And of course, like you said, you've refinanced multiple times. So have I. And pictures change, needs change, house structures change. And this even gets into, well, maybe refinancing isn't the best thing. Maybe selling is the best thing and downsizing or upsizing, depending on financial needs. And these conversations can happen. I've had people call me looking to refinance and they realize maybe home buying is the better option. And so we go down that pathway, you know, just looking at the different options and talking again to people that actually understand these whole picture, this holistic view of finance. And that's one thing I wanted to suggest also, there's a lot of advertising out there that has these bottom of the barrel interest rates, but you have to look at the spread between that offered interest rate and the APR associated with that because the rate may be low, the APR might be low, but the spread of the rate and the APR has a bunch of fees packed into it. And so it's kind of a teaser rate. It's to get the phone call, it's to get the email, the internet online application. You have to look at the thing holistically. Absolutely. And, you know, our business is built on relationships, right? And so I, we both get calls all the time about, hey, I can refinance you for those drop dead interest rates. But most of those companies that are calling you about that stuff are just interested in closing your loan today, getting paid and moving on. They're not about their relationship for life, customer for life, those kinds of things. So you got to be wary about that. And again, understanding it's not just about interest rate but it's about the cost associated with closing a refinance as well. And those can vary dramatically from lender to lender. And it's always good to do a good comparison. And again, not to beat a dead horse, but it's why working with a professional mortgage advisor that understands your entire financial picture, both short and long-term is such a huge help. Absolutely. There's a lot of accountability to running into people at the dog park or at the grocery store or walking along the sidewalk. You, part of the community, you have to really hold yourself out there as a high standard when you're local, when you help people locally, when you work with folks that way, when you're talking to some call center somewhere that literally is just looking to churn a unit of a refinance and will be here today, gone tomorrow. That's not really necessarily what's going to expose and generate look at what are the opportunities really here as far as a refinance might go for sure so do you want to talk about a term called equity stripping and kind of what that means and why people should be aware of what that is yeah so in the form of a refinance for instance there could be a benefit but also there's a net tangible benefit that must be established in most loans these days when you refinance that kind of wasn't the case, you know, let's go back 15, 20 years ago and people could continually refinance. The problem with that was maybe financially they were harming themselves by having these higher balances, you know, every time that they refinanced, they had these higher balances, but the lender made money or the loan officer made money at that point in time. And you could end up after a few refinances with $30,000 more owed against the house. And in some cases, these were with teaser rates or rates that were for a shorter period of time that the borrower didn't quite understand that, hey, if I just refinance every two or three years, I can stay in this lower rate environment. And some of that's old, but some of that could still be available today. And so we want to encourage a full view, a full look at what is happening to your balance sheet, not just your monthly payment with respect to considering a refinance? I remember the churning like it was yesterday, right? So, you know, it's like we had people that were literally refinancing every 60 days and weren't making any payments, right? And they were, like you said, they were doing it these teaser rates of 1%. And then what happened was once the music stopped and all of a sudden they had to start making their payment, they were used to living a lifestyle without making any payment whatsoever. And all of a sudden now it's like they couldn't afford to make the payments at all. Those are some scary times for sure. Dave, you're bringing up a great point because when you skip a payment, you're actually paying interest on the loan balance on your old loan all the way up until that old loan doesn't exist and on the new loan from the time it does exist. So you're, the timing of your payments might look like they've skipped a payment, but you're not skipping that payment. You are paying that interest at closing or in you know in a higher loan balance by refinancing the closing costs into the new balance. So just understand the cash flow aspect of it might be beneficial, but interest is due every day for the any loan that's on the house 
your old loan, your new loan, and you're not actually skipping the interest cost that goes along with that. Yeah, that's a good point, Eric. And again, just something that's part of the entire refinance picture that people really need to consider. Yeah, and so that's the value of talking to people that actually understand these principles, understand value for the client, and understand this concept of, I wanna do a transaction for you today successfully so that we can continue our relationship. And if your needs change or if interest rates again fall further, or if you're looking to remodel your house or do any kind of the life events, you know, sell this house, buy another one, we're here to help. Absolutely. Great points, Eric. So again, it's don't misunderstand the media today saying that I think we shared some text back and forth last week about, you know, interest rates have plummeted. It's like, really? I mean, yeah, they've gone down. And again, that's fantastic. And I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that trend. But you know, it, the media just hypes everything up and blows stuff out of proportion. You just have to have a, a realistic approach to things. And again, that's why talking to somebody that knows what they're talking about is, is truly concerned about your short and long-term plans is really beneficial. Absolutely. It's one of the biggest factors of home finance. Awesome, Eric. Well, appreciate you. Great insight. And uh, I am looking forward to, uh, you know, rates coming down and hopefully some refis in the future, but just has to make all, all the right sense, right? It does. And we do think that they're going to be coming down over time now. We think we've had this duration of the higher interest rates and they've held out probably until the bitter end of how long they could hold at these interest rates. We're not necessarily seeing this massive fall off just like they rose so quickly. We're not necessarily seeing in the forecast today that there's going to be this huge cliff and they, they just fall right off. Uh, and so in a month's time, you'll be able to get a point better in interest rate. We're probably not seeing quite that, but we're seeing if the future looks like there's going to be a relaxing of the interest rates. Which helps us too, because, you know, our focus obviously is really on the purchase transaction market, helping first time home buyers, et cetera. And this reduction in rates over time certainly helps with affordability with where we are today in the market. And I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, we think the real estate market will start to become a lot more alive and a lot more vibrant coming up into, you know, the close out of this year into next year. We, we really think that that's the case. Awesome. Thanks, well, Dave. Looking, looking forward to the next time, Eric. Appreciate all your Absolutely. insight. Have a good rest of the day. All right, you too.